Yeah. We'll be ready in just a second. You want me to say the pledge when we're finished? Oh. The wills of designated pledgee. Okay, let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you for this evening. and um, We got to wait until he tells us we live. Oh, you we have live. to record this. Let's oh, bring yes. the meeting to order. We're going to stop with a prayer from Representative Ford, and our uh, pledge will be led by Will Sy. Thank, Thank you so much. Father, we come to you this evening, and we just want to give you all the honor and glory that you deserve. Lord, we um, praise your holy name. We give you um, just uh, the, the word countenance is coming upon me right now. Just your countenance upon each of us, Father, that you would shine through our lives. Father, bless each of us as we serve you and we serve Madison County and our constituents. Help us to make wise decisions. I pray for knowledge, Father, straight from your throne. And I just ask for you to give us favor and uh, good working relationships. I love you. I praise your holy name. And I thank you for all your many blessings. In your precious and perfect name, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Yes, Mr. President, you have before you the uh, January the 4th, 2020 board minutes. I would ask if there are no changes of any kind, the board please approve said minutes. Good. Is that second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, I think uh, we want to start uh, off the agenda. We want to give our rest state representative uh, forward an opportunity to come before us and discuss what she Thank has. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. I, uh, on my drive up here, I was thinking last March, I was, I had it on my calendar to come before you and introduce myself. Like you probably already knew me and each of you already have my cell phone in your phone, but, um, just to say, Hey, I'm here. If you need me, call me. And I will always answer your call. Look, if I answer Gerald Steen's call the first time he calls, I will answer your call. You be confident of that. <laughs> True, Gerald. Well, you answered on the second call, but you <laughs> I will at least respond. You did well, though. I will say that. If any time and every time he's ever called me, I answer. So I ask the same from you if I call you for you to answer my call. Um, but I did want to come and just say, hey, guys, let's do – Let's, what, whatever you need, I'm here. I met with your um, lobbyist yesterday and have your wish list for uh, this, the State House. And I look forward to being able to do my best in bringing that into manifestation. And I am um, still can't believe that we did what we did last year. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I did want to ask for you to consider and please, I, I want so badly f to show the State House that Madison County can work well together. I'm not interested in going behind you or around you. I want to walk with you and let's do things together. We each know what's going on. I don't want to ever do anything that you're not aware of, and I don't want you to do anything that I'm not aware of so we can make sure that we're all on the same page and walking together. And that's why I wanted to come tonight and just ask each individually to please consider let's doing this resolution for the golf cart um, ordinance, I guess, is it, or resolution, would you call it. I've worked so well with uh, Mr. S. Espy. He has been so helpful to me, and I'm so thankful for that. And he just uh, invited me tonight, and I said, so thank you for that. But I wanted to ask you, whatever you don't, if, you, if there's an issue that you have on it, with you and whatever that is, but if, I want all five signatures. It's important for me, for us to, like I said, do the, let's do this together. I'm, I'm willing to, to learn the dance, and I want you to learn the dance as well. So that's what I'm asking. Um, I, 
any questions that you have, I'd be happy to try to answer, but um, really am going to rely on you and your wisdom uh, that all the research that you've done with the insurance company on that. So does anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. No, I'm asking you to consider, please, getting with Mr. Espy, making sure that you're comfortable with this, and I want all five signatures comfortable with this, and as soon as possible, because time is of the essence. I don't want you to be forced into signing it. I want you to be okay with it, and he has agreed to go back to the drawing board and make sure everybody's okay with it. I'm okay with it. There was, um, I had spoken with him earlier. Um, I would like to see maybe on D, section 1D, is that where I, I sent you that, uh, to take out any four-wheeled electric or gasoline power vehicles. I just want it to be golf carts and not, I didn't necessarily want that one in there. So, but again, it's, it's really, I want you the five of you to be comfortable with it and then bring me a resolution with all five signatures. And again, I don't want to go around you or behind you. I want to do this together. So that's why I wanted to come. And I was thankful that he um, invited me to come tonight just to speak with you. So Trey, I didn't get to say hi to you. I'm sorry. What, um, <clears throat> this is a resolution that would be introduced that would create legislation What's the time? What is the time span that we are working with um, on this? Public and private's probably in the next two weeks. Local and private. What is it? Local and private. I'm Local sorry. And Local and private. So we basically do not have the time to wait until our next board meeting. We need to uh, make our determination as quickly as possible. Uh, yes. Just, two weeks. Two weeks. Can I just describe the bill, Mr. Yeah. Just please. Quickly. Uh, the homeowners association approached us before and asked us to consider. Uh, you. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Representative Ford. Uh, thank you very much. So the bill in front of you, it's a resolution and a proposed bill. We went ahead and wrote the bill, which of course could be changed. Uh, Representative Ford introduced me to the drafts person at the Mississippi Legislature. I, I spoke with her, and uh, I drafted this as a result of speaking with uh, with the sheriff, with Massett, Derek Surrett, with Representative Ford, with the drafts person, and reading all the bills before. And I do want to let you know that uh, this is the first countywide golf cart bill in Mississippi issue if it passes. That's why we have to be so careful so the bill accomplishes two purposes one is to is to promote the safe and lawful operation of golf carts on certain residential streets in in Madison County and the second is uh, to provide for insurance coverage if uh, there's any uh, claims if someone gets hurt and I'll start with that one first Derek Red says that Massett is okay with this bill as long as the golf carts can be made street legal. Street legal is, is like if it were an auto automobile. So that means uh, headlights, rear lights, brakes, uh, seat belts, and, and blinkers, yeah, on the golf cart. So that's street legal. So if Derek's Red believes it's street legal, then we'll be covered in case of any accidents. So that's, that's the main thing. The other thing is that it doesn't cover all the roads in the county. Obviously, it doesn't cover operation of golf carts on highways or county streets, any county street where the speed limit is above 20. Um, it doesn't it doesn't relate. And uh, only certain residential roads, because we all know that if there's a pit road or a private subdivision, we don't that's not a county road, and so this this does not apply. So it only applies for street legal golf courts on residential subdivision roads that are under jurisdiction of Madison County, where the golf cart is street legal. And if we can accomplish those purposes, I think this is able to be passed. And uh 
That's why we're running. Countywide, countywide bill. It's a countywide bill on certain streets under the jurisdiction of Madison County. If there's already a municipal bill in force, I mean, I think they can coexist, honestly, uh, because this is street legal. But my main concern is making sure that this board is has insurance coverage if there's a, a problem. And so how will we know that they're street legal? Would they have to register somewhere and go through a test like you do when you're? Great question. So the bill says, this is a bill from the Mississippi legislature to allow you to create an ordinance that makes these golf carts street legal. It says that uh, the way it's drafted, it says that you are able to, the legislature will enable, enable you to create a registration program where you could create a registration fee for these golf carts to be inspected. So you are able to do that if you want to do it. So this is a resolution to ask the legislature to allow you to create an ordinance for this. And uh, in that ordinance, we're allowing them to uh, permit you to create a registration program. You know, at the very beginning, we started off saying that we all want to work together. Yes. It's a countywide bill. It's a countywide bill on on residential subdivision roads where the street mile per hour is 20 miles an hour or below. Countywide. City of Ridgeland, they do. They do. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Well, the, excuse me. The the prop, the ones like City Can, City Can didn't have one because they really don't have the issue with golf carts. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't seen a golf cart pass. <laughs> <laughs> my my building, in, in, except for the, the policemen doing flea market when they're putting out the sign saying no parking, I don't see golf carts in Ken. Um, we what we do see would be disabled people on the mm. little um, four wheelers. The, yeah, little ride about things yeah. for people who oh, are, are oh, totally disabled. Yeah, the wheel. They, well, they'd be a, I guess you. Something like a wheelchair, but other than that, um, I don't think that. I think that where, where this came to us from came from the the uh, subdivisions, and 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 they in the county, in the county, outside of the municipalities. Outside of the municipalities, it did. That's where that's where this got generated from. Yes, and I, those of us that live in we, these we can. subdivisions, we, can. we do see. We can. Carts and mostly the biggest problem is not so much adults as it is uh, children, right? Uh, turning loose on golf carts and mostly children, underage children that don't even have driver's license. So that's where the problem has been. At least the people that complain to me. I don't know about anybody else, but that's that's what I've heard. I, I did not realize that it's going to include the municipalities at the time. But I'm, I'm hearing you say that City of Ridgeland, Madison has an, an ordinance now. Madison does. Do what now? And yeah, that, that's that the best one. It does because my neighborhood has uh, golf carts driving around. Does Madison require you to register them and charge you a fee? And, I don't think so. Well, how are they covered through their insurance if they don't require blinkers and registration? I don't know. Okay, that's that. We're just under the city. Reunion is a pit road. Reunion is a 
is that we don't own, we don't have jurisdiction on that. They will, I mean. So I didn't, I, there's no county Mississippi tray with this bill, so. Yeah, I understand that, but how are they covered if they don't have blinkers and they're not having to get them registered? Yes. This is according to our insurance company. It's the way that you have it written. I spoke with Derek Surrett. Yeah. Our insurance, but through Masset, he says they're okay with it as long as the golf carts are street legal. Street legal. Headlights, tail lights, turn signals, seat belts, and drivers of age to own a license. So the way so the way this is is uh you can uh you can only drive with a license or if someone has a learner's permit in the presence of a licensed driver that's okay. So if we do nothing we don't have any liability, but if we do something we take on some liability. Yes, we were asked to do something by the homeowner. Right. That's why this all started. They came and they said we want you to pass a bill to operate golf carts in Mass County. That's why we're here. And uh, so we do nothing. Yes, I mean, we, it's status quo. But we certainly can't do anything where we have any liability, extra liability. And that's what this does. I'm, I'm, I'm real concerned because uh, I have several subdivision in, in my district and they've been mighty quiet uh, a lot of them don't have their golf course cart because they're trying to pay their house note uh, so they're not able to afford a $10,000 or $8,000 golf course and that's all them that can afford I'm thinking of Warren, probably one of the oldest subdivisions in Madison County, and I hadn't heard nothing from, and, and that's Deerfield, nothing. And so, with all my subdivisions seems to be happy, why would I want to go out here and stir them up and make them angry? So. <laughs> That's where I'm at. And, and, and the other part of it, whoever is lobbying for this resolution haven't done a good job. They hadn't contacted Paul. They came here and asked the whole board. But if I wanted this resolution, I was going to be to call each one of my colleagues <clears throat> and try to get them to support it. I hadn't heard nothing from the homeowners association and that's the way I like it so why 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 should I stir in the pot just asking no question it's a good question um, and even better question is where are the people that asked us for this I yeah Well, let me say this. Uh, it, it seems that we have time to look at what was presented to us because we hadn't had that before. And it seems that we have that time to look at it and maybe where the urgency was coming from or whoever was pushing for such uh, a, a, a bill or structure, maybe they'll show up and, and talk to the board and show us where um, it's necessary that we move forward. We might miss the window of opportunity this legislative session, but there's one every year. So. Rather let the sheriff speak for himself, but I did. Uh, when I drafted this originally, I sent it to uh, Representative Ford, 
Mr. Petro from the HOA, the one that made the presentation a month uh, uh, over Sheriff Tucker, the board, and Derek Surratt. So I heard back from Derek Surratt. He said he's fine as long as street legal. So we discussed what street legal meant and what's in the bill is accommodates street legal. Although they've not definitely said to me, yes, we'll want to oppose it or whatever. But I know that it should be okay based on our discussion. Hadn't heard back from Mr. Petro. It, it, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, once I drafted, I said it might be more stringent than what you thought when you approached the board because we have to assure that the board has no liability. He said, uh, if that's the best they can get, they'll take it. Those were, I'm paraphrasing, but he said that's, so I told him that we could not let anything through this board that caused concern for lack of insurance coverage. So he acknowledged that and said, by my way of thinking, fine. So that was massive, that was the HOA. Sheriff Tucker, I'm, I'm gonna let Sheriff Tucker speak for himself, but I think he didn't object to it, all right? He didn't object to it based on what I sent. And of course, Representative Ford is here, and then I sent the bill to the board. Uh, so, um, I mean, what else do you want me to say? This is, it always can be changed, it can be redrafted. If you want it to uh, just cover residential subdivisions outside of municipalities, that's easy to do. Mike, which, uh, if, if, the, if the supervisors passed a bill and you say the cities has one as well, which, which one would the law I, enforcement go by? I only know that Madison has one. And I read, I read the Madison bill, and it's pretty short, but it says the Mississippi legislature allows the city of Madison to enact an ordinance authorizing of golf carts in residential subdivisions within the city of Madison. That's what I read. I've not seen an ordinance, because I haven't, haven't looked for one, honestly. So that might be one, but I only know that the legislature passed the ability for them to do it. So, but I guess what I'm asking though, if if something like this passed, and and it's the city of Madison or the city of Ridgeland has one, which I don't know whether the city of ha Ridgeland has one or not, which I'm taking Representative Ford's. I don't either. I have seen the one that Ridgeland did for Madison, which was over here. Okay, I thought you said Ridgeland, but regardless, it doesn't matter. We'll just stay on. Okay, we'll stay on the city of Madison if they have passed one and we pass this one, and it's not similar, then then where does the law enforcement go when they start enforcing it? Do they enforce the one that the county passed, or do they enforce <laughs> the one that the city passes? Yes. The oh, hold on one second. Does the sheriff's department not cover the county and the city police cover the city? Yes. Mm -hmm. the sheriff goes in the city, too. The city yeah. Well, I think it's just North Bay on the east side for sure. Reunion is on. Let, let's follow up with uh, super, uh, with, super, uh, with Representative Ford's uh, question because that's a very good question to ask. And I like if we could do this is if the bill passes, can we can this board select the neighborhood, the subdivisions? Sure. <clears throat> Hold on one second, Mike. If you're asking me if if we're given authority from the Mississippi legislature to create a golf cart bill yeah. for county roads under the county jurisdiction right. outside of municipalities, can you pick and choose which 
subdivision would be covered under the bill, I would say to you that I would have a concern because there's equal protection there, the equal protection, meaning why, why, is, why are you treating one subdivision differently from another? And it's all on the county roads that are managed. Uh, that's what I would have a concern <clears throat> under equal protection of the law. Okay. Why? Because you'd have to give me a good reason why you would do that. Well, the reason and it I can't would... just be political. And it's got to be legal. So, so that's why this one says all roads below 20 miles an hour. Well, the county has jurisdiction over the subdivision road by prescription or dedication, because you know you don't have control over all the HOA roads in Madison County, only if they're giving it to you and we accepted it by dedication or prescription under 20 miles an hour. That's what this covered. Now you're saying outside of municipality, which is easy to do. That's easy to do because that's equal. It's either all in or all out. But once you start picking and choosing what's in, that's a concern. I'm kind of with Supervisor Banks. I'd like to have some more time to study it. Because yeah. I can tell you 90% of the golf carts in my neighborhood don't have blinkers. And two, a registration fee sounds like a tax to me. And people are going to get awfully upset if they get tickets for not having a reg. You know, I guess you're going to get a sticker. Or you don't have to. So you don't have to you don't have to have a registration program. The bill allows you to do it if you want to do it. So we don't have a bill yet. The bill comes from uh, I misunderstood. Yes. I thought that meant we were off the hook for liability purposes if it was registered. No. Uh, Sheila asked how could it be street legal? And I'm saying the bill allows us to register if you want to do it. Now if, the sh if, if, if there's a golf cart uh, with, um, that hadn't been inspected that's in these neighborhoods that has all of the equipment on it and it's stopped by the sheriff, then that's street legal. And it seems to me they would not get a fine or a, a ticket if they're street legal, where, irrespective of whether they're registered or not, if there's no registration program in force. Okay. Yeah. That'd be street legal. Yeah, let, let me say this before, before we close out on this. Out of all due respect, uh, Representative Ford, I, I know this is your first term. Uh, I've been around here a little while. Most of the time when a resolution comes from the Board of Supervisors, the Board of Supervisors get it together and send it to the state. The state level don't come asking the Board of Supervisors for the resolution. Sometimes when you're new, your constituents will try to use you or put you in the mix of something that you be on the back end of it instead of on the front end of it. No, I don't, I, they're not trying to use me. I'm trying to protect these children that are illegally driving these golf carts. They don't want them to get in their vehicles. Supervisor, because they supervisor going to have to do the voting on it first. 
and then it would have came to you. Well, I'd I, just like to have more time to take a look at it. That's all right. Okay. Really? Well, but, you know, and and I I first brought up the more time situation because I'm I'm only interested in in our uh, language that would keep us outside of the city limits and into the platted subdivisions yeah. because yeah. that's where the, the the problem seems to be in the platted subdivisions right. outside of the city limits. Cause let the let the cities take care of the cities and 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 their and their their problems and. You know, and if they need our help, we'll be glad to help. I, you know, you, uh, I think uh, our uh, chief deputy was getting ready to answer your question about how many calls did we get, if he had an answer. Jeremy, what, what was it like when? We did receive a lot of calls in the spring during COVID with golf cart related issues. We tried our best to enforce it uh, and and come up with a easy way to, to try to make all sides happy. As y'all know, that's difficult to do. I'll let the sheriff speak to his opinion on the ordinance. I will say, this is my opinion. If the stated purpose of the legislation or the homeowners groups that are coming is to keep kids off golf carts, that's already legal, guys. That's already illegal. Mm -hmm. you, you can't ride a golf cart on a public street, licensed, unlicensed, kid or no kid. So, right. Um, that's that's about all I got to say. Well, I agree with that, and and, and I, I have a friend that has a golf cart that he drives from his home to the golf course, uh, and and our subdivision, and I know he has uh, lights, and he has uh, mostly everything you would need to be street legal, but um, I don't recall, and I don't think there were seat belts. Because when we get to the golf course, I mean, we, we, we're hitting the ball and, and riding the car and getting in and out all the time. I hadn't noticed a seatbelt. He may have seatbelts. But other than that, I felt like he was street legal until I read this tonight and saw the seatbelt thing. Go ahead. No, I'm leaving. I'm taking up enough time. But I... Okay. Well, I Yeah, I, well, I've heard, Representative I Ford, I, I I I believe, and and I think you were contacted, we were contacted, everybody was contacted, everybody's in the same loop, uh, and I don't. It's not something that you were trying to do. The only thing you did was made yourself available for us as supervisors to say, "Hey guys, these folks are calling. They're your constituents. Uh, they 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 want some kind of bill." You know, I'm available to, to to put it in for you. So, and we appreciate that. Well, yeah. Okay. But I think something's going to happen, though. I, it may not be this term, but I think something's going to happen. Work it out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. All right. And again, if I take Gerald's call, I'll take your call. Okay. You just make sure you take mine when I call now. Yeah, I see a bank there. Okay. Well, we have uh, Judge Brewer uh, has joined us and I. I think she has something to discuss with us before we get started into our agenda. So let's let's bring Judge Brewer on. Thank you, sir. Okay. I have to say that every time I am in your presence or in this boardroom, I learn something. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's my privilege to appear before you and request uh, that you order state flags for the courtrooms. As you recognize, we have three state courtrooms or chancery court courtrooms in this building. And I think you know that you have circuit and county courtrooms as well as the youth court shared courtrooms. And we have justice court, obviously. It's my understanding from someone in Shelton's office that they have been ordered. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. State flags have been ordered. We are waiting delivery. They, they are back ordered at the major vendor here. Waiting delivery along with a number of other 
Well, I wanted to make that statement because the schools are putting them up, and I didn't want you to feel as though uh, we are delaying, for whatever reason whatsoever, in displaying the state flag, and I wanted it to be brought to your attention. They're about $75 a piece, and it's not a cheap thing, but it's still a thing that we need to think about, and I wanted you to address it. Since Shelton has indicated that they have been ordered and they're on back order, then it's been addressed. I also want to say thank you for everything you've done on behalf of us. I will bring up at the next time, when appropriate, some issue about some hearing equipment. The hearing aid equipment for the courtrooms is now out of date and does not work anymore. So people who appear and have hard of hearing problems or deaf individuals cannot hear even with microphones. And our equipment that we bought some, I want to say 14 years ago, is now no longer working and we need to address that. But I will put that on your docket at a future date and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Judge. Thank you, Judge. Okay. <clears throat> Let me knock that out. Um, I think we are concerned citizens and the first one, the one on the list that I have is uh, Mary Walker. Come right up to the microphone. I say good evening. Excuse good evening. my appearance, I just got off work. So uh, I am a uh, concerned citizen, Mary Walker, trying to get our private road turned over to a public road. Okay. Who, who the lady you have with you there? This lady right beside me is Miss Delores Anderson. Really? She is the owner of the road. Delores owns the road. Anderson. Delores Anderson. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at the petition here. And Shelton. Is there another cover go to this? On this concerned citizen. I got the cover and that the, first uh, cover, and, and then I got the names. The first cover needs to be removed. The one I have on mine. Okay, we there's a copy that's been turned over to the clerk's office mm -hmm. where Dolores Anderson's name does not appear on the first page. It only appears on the second, second page. page. And I'm sorry, I thought that was uploaded. Uh, but Dolores Anderson, as I understand, you are no longer disagreeing with the request to make this a public road. No, I'm not. Okay, she says she's not. So the clerk, uh, Cynthia, are you looking in the by, in the folder? You have a copy where her name is on the second page and removed from the first page. Okay. Upon okay. that, that make uh, our petition look uh, legal, and I would like to make a motion to form the committee. Uh, That'll be a supervisor bank yeah. and supervisor Gerald Steen uh, to go out and look at Smith Walker Road slash Watkins Brown Road. I kind of call it Walker Brown, <laughs> I, but anyway, I, I know that road. So I don't know if you want, want somebody to, to be some a little bit more unbiased. I know the road. Matter of fact, it was just on the road today. Well, that's why we want you to go there. Then. <laughs> okay. If you was on it, you already know the name. Where, where is that road, uh, Miss Banks? The road is off of uh, Old Highway 16. Now, the bridge is out, so we've been going around, uh, going out 16 and hitting it from the east end of Old Highway 16 coming back. All right, I'll call it's you about about uh, half, half a mile from Lee's Chapel, uh, uh, west of Lee's Chapel Church. You know, I was uh, out there this past weekend, the south side actually. There's plenty of people that live in there. As a matter of fact, there's a cemetery. Oh, uh, two, that's why you two, know where it's two, <laughs> two cemeteries. There's two cemeteries in on on that road. Two two cemeteries. All right, I'll second motion. Let's move on. With hey, I'll second motion. We were just on it. I told you today. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we've got a committee form of, of Steen and Banks. Uh, can we have a, a second of the motion? A commit uh, that no, I'll second. Se you second it? Gerald. Okay. I'm hoping y'all can have this back next meeting because it seems like both of y'all know exactly where the road yeah. is. 
All in, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay, we've got the committee. We'll have it back next meeting. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Anderson, thank you for coming out. Yeah. Right. Mr. Banks, are you asking uh, Ms. Walker to be back at the next meeting? Is that what you're saying? So we're going to have our report ready for next meeting. Okay, so you, you do not have to come back at the next meeting. Okay. No. Okay, all right. Yeah. The next people on the – I'm sorry, ma'am. If, if, when you get approved, they don't will. Do you all have uh, maybe a time frame we can look at? Because it's very necessary that we get these rooms fixed. So uh -huh. It, it'll be early summer before they can start causing yeah. bad weather. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. President, three people here to speak on the same item. We've got Ken Strait, Glenn Van Devender, and Charles Smith. The topic is Abernathy Road. Good, good. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, How you doing? I'm doing well. Nice to meet y'all. Thank you for everything y'all do. First time me coming up here to the board to address this issue. Um, the issue is basically the condition of the road. Um, Mr. Banks, you were a supervisor years ago. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that road out there. Yes, and, I am, um, sir. We, uh, it's just uh, it's really dangerous road. It, the road is really in bad shape. I, 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 I'm bringing it to the attention. I don't think anybody here would say that the road is not in really bad shape and needs some work on it. Could I stop you just a second? Shelt, could you bring our road manager in, please? Who road is it? Abernathy road. It's Abernathy Road. Abernathy. Yeah. West of Not to mention the bridge, but I was I was curious. Out. That bridge, is that uh, under the Tim, state? We need Tim in too. I want to know about that bridge. Gentlemen, we're discussing Abernathy Road. I don't know y'all were listening. You probably were listening outside. I wanted you inside so you can give me some insight on what we're going to do to help this and solve this problem and these issues on Abernathy Road. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well, you know, a number, number of things. The, the bridge is also out. That was done. I guess whoever did the bridge didn't foresee the rain and, and the entrance to it. Um, I checked into it I thought the bridge falls under the state now, is that a county bridge or is that a state bridge state aid maintained roadway which allows the state aid funds to be used to replace those bridges exactly okay thank you so um, just bringing it t to the attention of the board um, we've had difficulty out there school bus travels the road it's very, very difficult for two vehicles to pass on the same spot in the road. Many places, the edge of the road, the shoulders are gone. There's no shoulder. Uh, the uh, road base itself that was probably back years ago before I moved here from Maryland back in 99 is Yellow Rock. I haven't seen an old road like that in forever, but that's wearing up through. So I think we all agree. I'm just here trying to Hopefully uh, we can come to something and, and get some direction, sense of direction where the board and, and the future, where we're going to go with it. If is it, We've had several occasions where it was going to start, and actually the road grader, I think, Mr. Banks, while you were there, the road grader was brought out, and it took the sides of the road, getting prepped, ready to pave it, and we're going to pave it in 45 days, and then something happened, every, either for the funding or something fell through. I'm not, I don't know what it is, and I really don't care. It's just an issue we're looking to move forward with to make it safe for us. Uh, Johnson Line Road, which is part of Hines County, they just recently paved that road. So, if they, of course, the bridge is out now, but if they go down Abernathy Road, they're, they're looking at Madison County kind of funny. It's like this road is terrible. I hope the rest of the roads in the state isn't as bad, but... Uh, that's my concern, the safety and, and, and everything, and not to mention the wear and tear on the vehicles. We've been dealing with it for quite some time. Um, the patching uh, used to be they, it would be quite a while before they would come out and patch, but now they're patching, and uh, my girlfriend from Kentucky down here, she noticed them. She said, yeah, they're patching, but look, the tamper's laying in the back of the truck. They're not even tapping it flat. So they actually just make it worse by putting patches in there. You got mounds, it's just terrible. 
That's about really all I had to say about it. Thank you. Uh, I could go on all day, all night about it, but I'm sure we all want to eat dinner sometime tonight. Um, well, thank you, and 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 you will be talking because you're going to be calling me. I know, and we got a couple of other gentlemen that have some some same things to say. I would yes, imagine. sir. Yes, sir. They they live out there. We had another resident, Elizabeth Abernathy, that was going to show up this evening as well. But I speak for everyone out there okay. on the on on the condition of that road. It, it, can I? Uh, I guess the bridge. I think I want to talk to Cornelius first. See, Cornelius, what do you what do you know about Abernathy? Good afternoon, boy. What's going on out there? If the road didn't pretty much just start deteriorating, and so it's time for overlay. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only thing here, because you keep on patching, it's going to be just like a rock road, bump, 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 bump. So it's time for overlay. If you get overlay on there and put the shoulder back to it, you have a decent road out there. Okay. Right, Is there anything it. that we can do now while we're waiting to and, 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 and coming up with the funds to do the overlay? Is there anything well, we do. can I do out. now that, uh, that, that could help? Well, I do. I go out there tomorrow and look at it. If I can do some long hot patching on it, mm -hmm. I'd be able to do some hot patching out of the monthly budget. And some shoulder work. Shoulder work doesn't usually take very much no. money mm -mm. to you get the shoulders you. right because it seems there's some shoulder issues. Yeah, oh. we, we can take care of all that. Once we get out there, like I said, we're going to need to do the asphalt first, then come back behind and do the shoulder work. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Tim, what about the bridge? The bridge itself is in okay shape. What has happened is debris has piled up against that bridge, the timbers, and it has pushed water into the bank, and the bank has come slid. So on one end, we've got a bridge sitting here with nothing to get to it. So um, what we've got to do is get in there and get all the debris out and fix the approach, which is sounds like an easy thing to do, but that it's a it's a very deep hole and there's a lot of uh, debris in it. So it's gonna be a big project. It's not the first time it's happened. No, I, from what I understand, it has happened several times. Well, the bridge yeah. itself is not that old or the replacement of the piles is, they're no, relatively not new. That old, but this, this is, a reoccurring situation that the water coming down takes debris and separates the bridge from the road and you know I, don't, I thought we had fixed it before well, uh, i understand we have fixed it before it's actually the cribbing that holds the entrance to the bridge the yeah. cribbing they have a metal and they put the rocks in that's what started settling first and they dropped down the entrance to the bridge that's when it. That's when y'all had to. That's when it had right. to be closed. It really did. Um, I don't know if a steel plate, where I'm, where I live up north in Maryland, they'll put a two-inch steel plate across there. <clears throat> well, temporary, but yeah, you know. and keep on kicking. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at it, Tim, and, okay. and see what we can do. And I, if if you would give Shelton your your telephone number, and I give you a call, and I keep you abreast of where we are and what kind of progress we're making. Excellent. Thank you. That's really okay. what I'm looking for. Put All attention right. on it because okay. keep everybody safe. Thank you we so much. We want to keep everybody safe. We want to try to get this fixed for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I think he still got some. <laughs> they, 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 he was speaking. Well, no. Yeah. They going to get their, t put their numbers down too. I just want to make sure everybody out there understands. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah, you can talk. He he just said y'all couldn't talk. <laughs> I didn't say it. He said he spoke for everybody. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know there's no speed limit signs on Abernathy. Okay. And as a prop, we have two speed limits. Ten miles an hour, take care of your equipment. Or 45 miles an hour and get it over with. It's that bad, just letting you know. Okay, thank you. Right. And you can put your numbers down over, uh, with Shelton, too. They yes, sir. Thank you for having me come here and say a few words, but I never met you face to face, Mr. Banks, but you ought to know my name, Charles Smith. Yeah, I, I, we've talked. And uh, road supervisor probably knows better than you do. Okay. But anyway, my wife and I moved out there. Um, about 11 years ago, 
And after a couple of years there, you know, the, I got tired of the road and get my mufflers re-welded. And uh, uh, so anyway, that's when I started calling. I got you first, you know, and then you put me to the road supervisor. So make a long story short, I would like for y'all, when I'm told that you're going to do it and start, and over a five years, 17 phone calls, and I've been there 11 years, it's never happened. Mm -hmm. I would like somebody to tell us the truth. I know I know money's a problem. I know weather's a problem. I'm a retired residential contractor. But I would just like somebody to tell us the truth, and if they say we're coming, be there. That's what, makes That's what I'd like to have. Well, I appreciate that, and we're going to try to make sure that, that happens that way. I agree with you. Yeah, okay. I'd appreciate it very, very much. Okay. So, have a good evening. I need your number also. The, the okay. shelter right there we get. Okay. Good deal. Okay. Mm. Let's see. I don't know if we have any other concerned citizens or not. No, sir. No other concerned citizens, but I think we will move down to the consent items. No, that's a kind of proper. Did you say do that one already? Which one? That's a kind of proper owner association. I'm on service. Which one is the agenda? Well, they must be wrong. You have the wrong agenda. Uh, we don't have anything consent. after the consent, after the concerned citizens, but the consent items. Could I, uh, have we, uh, anybody ready to make a motion on the consent items? Do we want to pull them off? Any, anybody need to pull anything off, or can we get a motion? Make a motion for approval. Second. Uh, okay, I'll, there's been a motion for approval and a second of the consent items. All in favor? Aye. Okay, next we have uh, under the business items, um, Mr. Gerald Collier, come right up. I think you've been before us before. This is the uh, item dealing with the uh, property exemption for the Macario's Worship Center. Good evening. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, good to see you again. Um, last time we met, uh, I think a motion was made that um, that I get with Mr. SP and we sort of try to work something out as far as um, the um, tax exemption status for Macarios. I think since that time, Mr. SP as the board attorney has um, developed a, a tax form, which I think was a good idea um, for uh, Madison County to for churches to. When they purchase property to apply for tax exempt status, it makes the process simple. It makes come, makes sense to me. So I appreciate the board entertaining that. So, um, so we we here at the same situation. So I um I got the form today. So um, I completed the form, um, but it does require um, some. You you want to speak? Good first. Okay. Um, I do have an affidavit from the, the pastor, Dr. Leon Collier, mm -hmm. um, um, stating his credentials. He's a board certified chaplain, ordained minister, author, former contributing religious writer to Mississippi Link. He's a um, chaplain for Tyson Foods, serves as a chaplain to the Governor's Mansion. He's a graduate of Criswell College, Memphis Theological Seminary, Tr Trinity Theological Seminary. He states that Macario is organized operating as a church for religious purposes only. Um, Macario is um, was not organized and does not operate for the benefit of any private interest. No part of the net earnings of Macario's worship is, is inured to the benefit of any private shareholder or individual. Macario's worship does not attempt to influence legislation or substantial party activities. It does not participate in any campaign activity for any political can, candidates. Um, then he states, um, Macario's is located at 528 Hart Road. Its weekly services and church-related activities take place on this property. And we list the... Um, this real property address location bears the parcel number 093E-22011 backslash 09.00. Um, 
031475 and bearing pin number 030420. That's fine. Okay. And then we got a vacant lot. He lists that. He states that it is going to be used and intended for use in the future for only church-related purposes. And Chair, I've got to be heard on this. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. If you go to number 60 on the agenda, you'll see what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so last meeting, you asked me to develop an application for tax exemption, primarily for churches. But we went ahead and did it for all aspects of property requesting a tax exemption since we were doing it. So I work with uh, the tax assessor on this. He has approved this form. Uh, it confirmed today, and he knew that Macarios was coming back. Mm -hmm. So Norman uh, has agreed to this for, to this form, and basically it's pretty simple. But for churches, churches are exempt normally. But in order for automatic exemption, um, you could have a church building and a reasonable amount of land around the church building. But if there's other land somewhere else owned by the church, it's not necessarily exempt. So it depends on if it's or what it's being used for. Uh, it's got to be used for a nonprofit purpose. So that's why uh, this form is uh, three or four pages, but it, it instructs the church. It gives them the code section, 791133, so they don't have to read it in the law book. It tells them the only ways a church can be exempt. And it lays it out there. And then it asks them what's their, what they want to do, what part of this applies to that church. And then if it's land which is not contiguous to the land that the building is on, we ask them what has it been used for. Is it profitable, not profitable, and why? And then we're asking, and because in this situation, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at. So, so uh, the lawyer is confirming that the Macarios is exempt normally, plus the non contiguous land also is exempt because it's being used for a non profitable purpose under the envisioning of the statute is listed and we're asking for confirmation from the pastor and a deacon or the business manager just so that you know everybody just can't come and get the exemption so so this was created Norman has approved this so I'm recommending that Macarus receive the exemption based on the confirmation of the pastor is read and the lawyer and also, while we're at it, if, if you could just take me out of order and approve number 60. Okay. Mr. President, I would approve item number 60. Is that second? All in favor? Aye. It is approved. And what about the tax exemption? Mr. President, I would make a motion to approve to give them tax exemption. Is that second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, it's approved. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen and, and gentlewoman, lady. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you for your okay. patience as right. well yeah. in working with us. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good day. All right. Is that it? That's it. That's it. Your briefcase, though, and your stuff. <laughs> I think I'm going to need that. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Okay, item number six. What, where are we? <laughs> Well, we jumped from 49 to 60. Item number 50, item number 50 um, the tax collector. That would be you. I would like to say that uh, bravo uh, for taking up um, interest in the accounts that we have and how much money we make and so on and so forth. <laughs> and I appreciate that very much. The only thing that I would ask you to do is just let me um, have another date. Uh, if you 
give the uh, award uh, a depository for the county to uh, somebody else, if you would just give me another date so that I can move everything uh, that way, I don't want to lose a penny. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay? We don't want you to lose a penny. Either. No, not a one. Okay. The tax sale void is just uh, um, it's just a tax sale void. I'll take board. credit for the for the error. Uh, Mr. President, I'd make a motion for approval. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. It is void. Okay. 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 Anything Appreciate else? you working with us on that as well. Uh -huh. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Okay, Tim. Good evening, board. All right, first item I've got for you is a recommendation that the board approve and award the construction contract to Greenbrier Digging Services. This is for on-site uh, sewer lift station in support of the Amazon facility. This will be for 485 650 and also to authorize board presidents to sign contracts when they're available. Is that it? All, all in favor? We had one motion in two seconds. Uh, All right. Second, second item is. Uh, I recall. And Trey. Hit it, Tim. All right. The second item I had is uh, <laughs> the uh, supervisor, Steen, asked me to give a discussion item tonight on the sequencing of how we would do the parking lot in front of the tax assessor collector's office and do it in a way that we would limit the amount of disruption to patrons going in and out. Um, if you look at the attachment, what we have is um, the blue lines are basically the, the drive-through traffic going through, mm -hmm. and the bottlenecks, as currently, are in, we'll say, the east and north parking areas. We won't be in any of those areas. What we're going to do is route construction traffic in through the out which will be the southern driveway. We'll block traffic for the 30 seconds it takes to get a vehicle in and out, or we'll redirect them back to the north to come out the first entrance. So we, we think we will have minimum disruption to the, the facility itself while we're constructing the, the new parking lot. All right. Mr. President, I, would, I just yes. have a couple of questions, if you don't mind about it. Go ahead please. with your question. Uh, and I, Tim, I appreciate you. Uh, writing these just yes, kind of little instructions down. One thing that I would ask that uh, if we could change on this, the starting okay. time you had at 8 o'clock, could okay. we make that at 9? Would it hinder very much if we made it at 9 o'clock? Uh, we, can, we can do that. Yeah, that, that gives the subdivision time, the people in the subdivision that's coming to and from, it gives them a little time to make sure they're out in the morning time. Okay. If we could make that change, I appreciate it. Okay. Also, uh, when do we expect to start on this? Have we? Do we have? Do we have direction yet as to doing this? And excuse my <clears throat> ignorance. Uh, Tim, I don't remember what was the total cost on this. I think we had a budget of seventy-five. Okay. Were you intending on using the term bid contractor for work? Uh, I'm. No, I'm. What I, I would probably do competitive bids on the different okay. different items that we need. I, I thought we was going to do it in-house. Well, there's certain items that we can't do in-house. Curb and gutter we can't do in-house, and surveying we can't do in-house. Okay, so so basically what are you asking for the board tonight to get started on this? Well, I guess I just need direction from the board. Is this something that we want to do and that um, move forward with it? Yeah, I think we gave that to you last time, but we'll, okay. we'll vote on it again at this point. Uh, and the last question I have is the landscaping. We're going to come back. If we move forward with it, we will come back with the landscaping. That's my understanding. Um, at the last meeting, City of Madison came, and I spoke with them in the hallway. They got my number, and were going to call me, and I haven't heard from them. But um, we still got plenty of time to do it. Yeah, we, we have time, but we'll come back with the landscaping. So basically tonight, you, you need a motion to move forward with this with uh, up to spending up to seventy-five thousand dollars for the additional parking places. Correct. Is that yes. Okay. Thank you. 
I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made by Supervisor Steen and second by Supervisor Baxter. All Who, in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed. The city of, or the town of Flora has requested that the county engineering department help them with overlay of streets in their town. They've got money to do it. They just need some engineering help to put the plans and specs together. And they've come to before the board and to ask that the county engineering department can do that for them. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Can I give a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Move. All right. Next item is Ashby Ridge Phase One Final Plat. Um, this is approximately 15.86 acres with 43 lots, and we do have the letter of credit. Motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Where is that? Go ahead, Tim. Okay. Next item is uh, final plat of Highlands of Yandale Farms, Part 1A. Uh, this is... 27.4 acres with 90 lots. And we do have a letter of credit for the wearing surface on this as well. Okay. That's the motion. Is that a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. We've had a request to pave Gluckstadt Road east of Weisenberger up to the entrance to the ABC warehouse. Yeah. Uh, this will cost roughly $9,000 more or less. We ask that the uh, board approve this and allow the asphalt maintenance funds to pay for it. Is it second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Next item I have is time extensions for two of our MPO projects. Both of these are in right away acquisition, acquisition phase. And like everything else, COVID has uh, crippled our ability to get things done in a timely manner. We've had Team members with COVID, we've had reluctancy from individuals to meet with our team. The court system has slowed down. So we've got two letters here requesting for, to the MPO that we get a one-year extension for each project. We do not anticipate that we'll need anywhere near one year, but that's what we've been directed to, to ask for. Okay, can we get a motion? Move. Okay, move by Sting, second by Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Final item I have is the final plat for Oakfield, or Woodscape of Oakfield, Phase 3. Uh, Motion by Jones. Is that second? Second. Uh, oh. Second by Bax. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. That's all I have. All Thank right. you. Scott. Uh, Mr. President, Board of Supervisors, good evening. Uh, the first one item I have is MIPITU rezoning. I do have a letter from the attorney, Walter Wilson. I have placed that on the desk each of you have, and I have given a document to Mr. Um, Light. Uh, they are withdrawing that petition, and they will be resubmitting. Okay. Make a motion for approval to withdraw. Is, is that second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 60 has been done. Shelton Vance, 61. Mr. President, Supervisors, I would like to draw your attention to a resolution that has been submitted by the City of Ridgeland. This resolution is their notice uh, to us that they intend to withdraw from our solid waste plan. So if you would acknowledge this resolution from the City. Make a motion for acknowledgement. The motion that second. Yeah, second. Second. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. All opposed. Motion passed. The next item on the agenda are some pro uh, some preliminary drawings for a building that I have identified as a Ridgeland office building, but it could be somewhere else. This is a building specifically for the tax collector that the board discussed uh, some time ago. So these are the drawings that have been put together by the architect. Uh, the architect has met with the tax collector uh, a couple of times, and this is our current status of, uh, of the drawing of that building. Mr. Vice President, I would, I'd make a motion to acknowledge uh, this. Uh, Got a motion to acknowledge this. Second. 
Got a second. All in favor? Well, it also, also, if you don't mind it, um, tax collector, I don't know whether she wants to say anything, but I know she's put a lot of work and effort in this along with Mr. Vance, and um, not sure she wants to say anything about it at this time or not. But. Any comments, Mr. Tax Collector? approval of a building for us for the tax collector uh, you already know how much uh, problem we had with the public uh, being able to have enough room in the uh, office that we have now with the tax assessor and uh, the uh, vision that I have of Madison County is uh, population will continue um, in that area. There are so many homes going in now. I know it's um, I know it's transient right now, but things will come back around and change, and we just need that uh, room for the tax collector to be able to. Uh, do what they're supposed to do for Madison County. We've I've done everything I can do right this minute, put things on the computers and things of that nature, but I don't have any storage room whatsoever. And um, Norman has been so so nice to us in the Madison office trying to make room for us, but he's expanding too, you know. So uh, once upon a time, we had a couple of cars for Madison County that rode around with tax assessor written on the outside of it, but it's not that way anymore, and he's a, he has a fleet, and that's why you're building a new parking lot. The uh, building for the tax collector is the same way, and uh, we just need that room uh, for Madison County. I um, would appreciate very much your approval of this, and uh, I'll stop talking. Thank you, Kay. Yeah, okay. Okay. We approved it already. No, you got a motion and a second. Motion and a second to acknowledge the plan. Acknowledge the plan, Mr. Banks. Is that on item 62? It is. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President, item 63 is a legal services contract. This provides uh, the county attorney as well as some additional employees uh, some. Uh, research, legal research of Mississippi Code and Mississippi mm -hmm. history. This is a three-year contract starting off at 175 a month and moving up over into the third year at 185.65 a month. I would present for your consideration. Make a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 64 is a resolution regarding inmate welfare funds. You may be aware that there are funds that are collected uh, off of the sale of... Um, food and other non-essential health and beauty items, uh, personal, uh, personal care items that are sold to inmates. That money is placed into a fund that can only be used for the benefit of inmates. What we have is a request to purchase a property storage bag for the inmates. And we would like you to find that that property storage bag purchased to hold the inmates' property is <clears throat> for the benefit of the inmate, so we can use that uh, funding to purchase those uh, bags. Okay. I like the old property storage bag. Can we get a motion? Motion. Is that second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Oh. Okay, our controller. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. On the agenda is item 65 for your consideration and approval, which is the budget amendments and the interfund cash transfer. Make a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. <laughs> Um, next for your consideration are item 66, the approval of the general claims docket through 69, the payroll dockets for January 4th, the 6th, and the 13th. Is there a motion? Take a motion. Is motion of the second, uh, Baxter second. Uh, 
All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And the next item is number 70, approval of the Pan and Zoning Commission per diem. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Four supervisors here then. Okay. Uh, Carl, I got one question for the under sheriff. What's your question? It's just so we're, I'm already getting blown up about this golf cart order. Y'all are currently ticketing people under 16, correct? That are driving the, uh, the golf cart. Take it home to the mom. Are we already ticketing people under 16? Under 16. If, if we if we stop somebody, I mean, it's always an officer's discretion, but yes, it, it is currently illegal for anybody to ride a golf cart on any public roadway, adult, juvenile, or anybody. Okay. All right. Um, do you, okay. Let's, uh, let, let, let's kind of finish this one yeah. item here, Most and then we can get car. back to that. The yeah, motion on Fleet Corps is by Paul. Is there a second? Oh, okay. All in favor? Uh, there you go. All right. Thank you. Now, thank you. Uh, go back. Uh, hey, uh, what, what do you think we need to do to move forward? And what, what, what do you need us to do to help you enforce the law, I guess, is what I need to do. We've got the tools and what we need to enforce it. Okay. We're, we're good. All right. Thank okay. you, sir. Right. Ready for the chief? Yeah, we got uh, our Chancellor Clerk running a lot. You have something. Mr. Here. President, with that being said, so you you do not need a resolution from this board then uh -huh. to, to uh, that was talked about earlier. Is that correct? To enforce what you and Supervisor Baxter were just discussing? Mm -hmm. If you're asking me if we need a resolution from this board to enforce illegal operation of golf carts, it's already illegal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Just give them some more tickets. Okay. That's uh, that's clear enough. Thank you. That's clear. Okay. Yes, we've got a whole stack of them tickets. Just give them more tickets. I don't like new laws. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, it's, it's, Let's see, Chancellor Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Lot. If you remember back in December, proposals were received from Bancor South, Bank Plus, Origin Bank, Renaissance Bank, and Trustmark Bank to be the depository uh, for Madison County. The all proposing institutions met the qualifications set forth in the statute to be the depository. Mm -hmm. uh, Origin Bank did not, however, include their fees in their proposal. Mm -hmm. Renaissance required to be the solitary dis, uh, depository. Uh, Bank Plus and Bank Corp South required $5 million, I mean, each of them basically the same thing, $5 million before they paid any interest whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, the single one who paid interest, uh, regardless of the amount, was Trustmark. So we have not had a single depository since, uh, I think, 2010, I believe, Sheldon and Nason and I all have, have discussed this. Uh, Sheldon and Nason have worked diligently on it. Uh, so I believe Sheldon's one told me it's 2010 we had a single depository. Since then, we've always had dual, at least, depositories so that we would not have all our, quote, eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. But any money that's not put, unless it's for over $5 million, it's not put in the trust mark account. If it's put in any of these, in the bank plus or bank or south, uh, we, we thought about making them uh, secondary depositories, making trust mark primary depository, but no interest would be paid under $5 million. So at the recommendation uh, of the three of us, we recommend that the trust mark be the county's sole depository eligible to receive and hold deposits from any county offices. Okay. Now, I know there's people who have been dealing with the tax collectors, dealt with Bank Plus, and others have dealt with others, but that's that's an issue. Once again, this is the board's uh, issue here. Okay. Well, now, the tax collector did make a statement asking for uh, a day to move. I guess 
she's got enough on the deposit to where she's making some interest. And before she m moves it, she wanted to make the interest and, and then be able to move it. Can we coordinate that some kind of way to make sure that when we do make our move, pulling all our eggs into the one basket of trust mark, that we're not losing interest trying to make interest? Yes, sir. I believe Nason provided an attachment here, uh, giving a date. We may, you may want the board may want to consider a different date or that date before. Let's see where that attachment is. Well, it's not. Hmm, didn't show up on my computer. Didn't you say there was an attachment? It was in the email. In the email. Not, okay, so we don't have a date. So y'all to vote on for this. So y'all can either vote on a date or just turn it over to the uh, comptroller and administrator to determine the appropriate date for people to move their funds. I think we could make, have the motion that allows for the comptroller and the administrator to determine the appropriate date. Uh, I don't, is that legal, attorney? I was saying I, I I was thinking that we could make the motion to allow for the comptroller and the county administrator to pick the best date to move all funds into the trust mark account. Well, that'll make that motion. I second that motion. Okay. Mr. President, before we vote on that, yeah. I, I was wrote, uh, scrolling all the way down. What does the Madison County, down at the very end, it has uh, Madison County Depository bid January 21st. Is that the, any date that you're looking for, Mr. Lott, or or not? I believe that may have been one that Nason uh, suggested. But, uh, and that's uh, what I'm asking. Yes, sir. If it's January 21st, then. That's that's really close. That's the one at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's the one mm -hmm. at the very bottom, and that's the reason I'm saying that, uh, you know, whether we go with that date or whether we go with the 22nd or... Uh, well, my, my, my particular motion was to allow that comptroller to pick the yeah, best said, optimum said, said. date, and that way we don't have to instead of to set the date up. She can pick the best optimum date. She can look at everything we got, where it is, and see... What's the best time to move funds so that we make the most out of the money that we already have on deposit? At the same time, working with the tax collector, who probably has the most uh, funds. Did, did you mind putting your adding to your motion for the month of uh, January, within the month of January? Within the month of January, yeah. I agree with that. If you uh, put that in your motion. That she would then... wait, they would wait until next December. <laughs> within but, the month of January. Delegate that function yeah. to her. Yeah. Yes. Within the month of January, add that to the motion. It's within the month of January. So, so all, all the funds yeah. that might be transferred it, to trust. Board. And it is the responsibility of the, bo of the board to make sure that this happens. And that's right now I'm Sorry. just asking to mm -hmm. put it within the month of January. Within the month of January. So in our next board meeting, we'll get a report that it was all, that when it happened and, and everything. Correct. Mr. Mr. Banks, yeah. could I could I ask? Are are you saying to make sure that we get the January interest accrual off of the existing accounts? Is that what you're? That's that what, what we're you're trying to get. We're trying not to waste any okay. any interest that so we may I, have I, already. We've already. This the this the nineteenth. Okay. So I, I I would I would ask you to consider making February one the date to move the money. Okay. so that we would get the accrual at the end of the month because my concern would be that a bank may say based on your ending balance of the month there is no interest due to you so so then our last date uh I, I, we need to have it done by uh, uh february 2. <clears throat> okay february 2. Okay. Okay. remember yeah. you have a statute that you operate under that requires interest to be paid yeah on, a, on your deposits. So when you have at least two of the banks 
that have said we're not going to pay interest on a balance below $5 million. Yeah. There are several accounts that we have across the county that do not have a $5 million balance to them. Mm -hmm. There's a couple that have more than that, including the tax collectors, but basically those banks are saying they're putting, they're putting you in a situation where you can't follow the state statute if you use that bank. Okay. I think what we what we added was to that motion was that money would be moved no later than the second day of February. And you understand, Mr. President, that means people are going to have to contact the bank, going to have to open up accounts and receive deposit books, et cetera, from those banks in that time period. I think it can be done. Yeah. But everybody needs to be contacted in the yeah, morning and explain that this needs to be. Yeah. yeah. You got to get started tomorrow. They need to be con Those who aren't watching this meeting need to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm already. Okay. We're already in the process of. But. Okay. So we have a motion that, uh, and a second. Uh, everybody show by sign of aye. Aye. If they approve. Aye. Okay. Good. Now, got to do that one. <laughs> Next, Sheriff. Item 73 board is an amendment to our current food service agreement at the detention center. Uh, we would ask that you would acknowledge and approve that amendment. Uh, it is a rate change. The rate, lowest rate there, going from a dollar and eight to a dollar and eleven cents per meal. This is due to some costs that our providers incurring uh, due to COVID. We've had to switch to some, for lack of a better word, to go type containers and stuff like that, and it's just in cost costing them. And and we'd ask that you approve that amendment to increase that rate. Motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Okay, good. Additionally, if you've got time, uh, members, I've got a letter here from Sheriff Tucker that I'd like for you to acknowledge if you're all right with it, uh, that is addressed to you. It, it's, I'll briefly read it. It says, Dear Board Members, I am approving Dusty Perry, a Gluckstadt Fire Department employee, to assist with the county fire investigations on a voluntary basis. Mr. Perry will exist, assist the county Madison County Sheriff's Office Fire Investigator Joel Evans at the request of the fire coordinator. If you have any questions or if you need any additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your assistance in this matter. Uh, we were requested by the fire coordinator. Uh, Dusty Perry does help us with some fire investigation scenes, and we request that we put that in the minutes to acknowledge the fact that we have asked him to do that, and he's agreed to do that on a voluntary basis so that he's covered as he's outside of the Gluckstadt area assisting us. Can we get a motion on that on that letter? Motion to acknowledge. Is there a second? Second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Fin finally, one more item, if you don't mind, request from uh, acknowledgement to send bills to MDOC for October 2020 inmate billing amount $6,509.48. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Bill them. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we got Shelton. I'm, I'm at old business. Mr. President, I'm not aware of old business. Okay, so now I'm at new business. Does anybody have old, any old business? Yeah, I got one here. It one old business right here. Well, old than you. Yeah. Uh, Shelton passed this to me a little while ago, but I'd like to make a motion that we authorize uh, Shelton, Danny Lee, and Mike, if you need it. To apply for the recreation trail grant fund cycle for this upcoming year for uh, South Spring Park, uh, we received that grant last year, and hopefully we can tack on and, and, and get it again. That's a motion. Is that second? All in favor? Uh, okay. Mr. Yes. Banks, could I could I ask Mr. Griffin to add Tim Bryan to that list? Tim? Yes. yes. Add Tim to the list. Okay. Yeah, need the engineer. Okay. And uh, is there anything else? Okay. We have, we have a couple of executive yeah. session items. We have a couple of right-of-way acquisition items. Okay. I think there is a legal update and also a possible economic development issue that we need to talk to you about. We did carry the vote on the previous motion on that, did we? Ronnie. Ronnie. Uh, did you hear that? Yes, I was right. She said we did. Yeah, okay. Did vote on okay. We're going into executive session. Well, can we get a motion? Motion to go in and close the termination. Close the termination. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. 
All in favor? Uh, we are now in close determination. All right. <laughs> we used to just say, we going to close, close session. session. Close session. Yeah.